Got good news and I got bad news for you. We are Big Joe and Laura here on Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. Hopefully that's the good news. Uh, no, that's just the thing I have to legally do when we open oh. up things. Otherwise we get, you know, anyway, blah, blah, I, blah. I just didn't want people to think we were the bad news that we were here. No, the uh, the good news. Uh, I will tell you in a second. Uh, the bad news first. Okay. It's Thursday. Want to hear the good news? Yeah. Tomorrow is Friday. Oh, I thought you had really, like, it's not going to snow today or something good, but I know that's not true. I don't even want to look at the weather, to be honest. Don't I know it it was cold when I came in this morning. That's that's about all I can tell you. It's going to keep being cold. Just don't think about it too much. Hey, I I did something this morning that I'm kind of proud of, but I don't think you're going to find legitimate at all. Um, showered? No, I did not do that this morning, actually. But that's not the point. That has nothing to do with this. Okay. I showered last night. Thank you. All right, Stinky, what do you got? No, I'm not Stinky. Um, <laughs> so this morning, I got into a race on Division with a Dodge Charger, and I won. What? Your car yes. versus a Dodge Charger? Yes. I drive a Honda Accord, and this morning, I was at the light at, uh, I think it's Martin Luther King and uh, Division. It's a great and, place to drag race in the morning. Well, even, you know, five in the morning is a good time. But he, like, he pulled up in a weird place. He was kind of like in my back corner panel. Like, he's like, I'm ready to go. And I was like, are you? And so as soon as the light changed, I gunned it. He gunned it. I won. <laughs> I don't think he knew we were racing, but I won. And that's the important part to me, that my crappy <laughs> car beat a Dodge Charger I just at 5 in the morning on Division Street. I, I just Again, don't, I don't see that. I don't know that he thought we were we were uh, racing, but I'm pretty proud of it. Did you actually have kind of the thing where it's like, beep, beep, beep? Well, I mean, the light went from red to green. I feel like that's the closest you could get in real life, because obviously you're not going to get the, like, the drag race lighting where it goes, you know, d- the different colors. There's only just the switch. But as soon as it turned green, let, let me tell you, I gunned it. I didn't squeal my tires because I am respectful of people and they're trying to sleep at 5 a.m., but... I did manage to get to the next light before he did, and then uh, he kind of slowed down, and then I really overtook him, and then I had to turn it over by Heartside Parking to get here. So, you know. I I would never, in my car (laughs) or your car, try to actually do something. I just picture you like, here we go! I do have a uh, Honda, so it is perfect for the Tokyo Drift. I was just whipping it around the corner. You know, I can't whip around the S curve right now, so instead I'm just kind of, I'm just Skirt. going down to division. Skirt. And this, this guy's probably just like trying to go to work, definitely not racing me. And I'm like, let's go! Like coffee hasn't kicked in. I'm tired. The baby woke me up early. I'm ready to fight. And I won. So you know what? If you're following your dreams out there and you think you can't beat a Dodge Charger in a road race, just try it at 5 a.m. You might have a fighting chance. If you're the, uh, the gentleman or lady in the Dodge Charger, I'd like to apologize. Yeah, you know, he, he he's not in charge of me. All right. Mix 95.7. <laughs> it's time for Big Joe and Laura's Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. Sacred Heart Academy in Grand Rapids is off for spring break this week. Kind of jealous about that. Yeah. And uh, when class resumes on Monday, 42 students are going to travel to the path of totality thanks to an anonymous donation. It's one family. They're a wonderful family. We're really grateful for them. We're not doing this next year. <laughs> you know, flying off. I don't know where the next solar eclipse will happen, right? But we're not doing this again for quite a long time. So they saw this opportunity is in front of us and we either take it or it, it's gone. So they, they did a really wonderful thing for us in, in giving this to us. That is so cool. I'm going to Indianapolis, actually, but I'm not going to be there for the uh, eclipse. Yeah. But it's such a neat city, and I really hope they have a great time, and, and it's just one of those amazing experiences they re- remember for the rest of their life. Okay, so do you think you live in one of Michigan's best places? Uh, I think we live near it. I feel like if it's a really rich city, it's got to be one of the best, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, Niche did release their annual rankings of best places to live in the U.S. for every state and metro, and of course that includes Michigan, and the list takes into consideration crime, public schools, cost of living, job opportunities, etc. And the best city in the state, while not far from West Michigan, is not in West Michigan, and that's Okemos. The rest of the top five, east side of the state. So I don't know what that says about West Michigan, but I don't appreciate the shade they're giving us. I think there's lots of great schools and opportunities over here, too. Did any city in West Michigan get on this list somewhere? Um. Well, uh, East Grand Rapids is number 15. 
Oh, okay. I mean, we're number 15. We're number I know. 15. Forest Hills is 21. I mean, it's okay. not, it's not okay. great, but I mean, we did make the top 40, so I guess there's something for that. Interesting. And your final need to know new story. Nobody wants to go there, but for this one, we will. Police in Cleveland are looking for a man who pulled a gun on a Burger King employee, and the reason why is insane. He ordered like two sausage, egg, and cheese croissants, and... Uh, sausage, biscuit, and hash brown. The order came up to eight dollars, and he actually thought it was. He was like, "My order can't be right. It came up. To, it should be like eleven dollars." And I'm like trying to explain to him that we had a promotion going on, and like it's cheaper. He started cussing and getting all out, and I was like, "Well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't know why you want to pay more money. I don't know why people are so angry out here at nine o'clock in the morning." How are you mad that they gave you a better deal? I know how mad I get when my food's not there. We've talked about this before on air. Listen. But, yeah, dude, a deal? Hell yeah. That's amazing. Some people are just always paranoid. That's your need to know news here on Mix 95.7. So, some people may say not to talk to them until ha- they have their coffee, but what about waiting until lunch? Hey, we're Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. And there is a new trend that is going on right now that people are trying out, and it's called speech fasting. Have you heard of this, Joe? I've heard of fasting, like uh, where you don't eat for a certain part of the day. You kind of start out. But uh, is it the same thing? You just don't talk to a certain point? Basically, yes. It's called speech fasting. Uh, Basically, people avoid trying to talk until noon is the idea. How is Uh, that even possible? Yeah, I I think you almost have to work from home or not be around human beings in order to do this. Because, like, clearly you and I... That's not happening or we're not going to have jobs for very long. We're like, hey, it's commercial free and break free until noon. Good luck on speed. I think our bosses would probably kick yeah, us out the door. That wouldn't work for our job. And even <laughs> if it's not your job, I don't know. I don't know if anybody could do this. I, I think of Lindsay like she works from home sometimes with her job like yeah. today. I know she's going to be talking to the dogs. Even if she doesn't talk to me, if she's mad, she's like, hey, Benny, I can do it. You know? Oh, yeah. I talk to the baby constantly. So I I totally understand. Like, I'm just making noises. But they say that basically it's going viral right now because there's a European singer who says they do it. Obviously, as a singer, they have to protect their voice. So the idea. Yeah, vocal rest. Yeah, vocal rest. So a lot of people are like, well, I could do this too. And there is some science behind it because one study in 2005 linked uh, prolonged periods of silence to lower br- blood pressure and it helped reduce uh, cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So yeah. if you don't talk a lot and you're just quiet and peaceful, you're less likely to have a heart attack. You're less likely to have high blood pressure. You're going to be healthier. So they say, you know, maybe you can't com- be completely silent, but the less you can talk before noon, the better it is for you. Oh, that's... We're going to die young, aren't we? Oh, yeah. We're... we're- <laughs> If you magically opened up your bank account right now and it said you had $30,000 that you didn't do anything to get, what would you do with it? Hey, we're Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7, Grand Rapids Best Mix. Even though it's probably a mistake with my bank and I'll owe the money, I would try to spend it quickly. (laughs) Because you're hoping that they don't pull it out of your bank account? Yeah, I'd want to do like an (laughs) online finder's keepers kind of a thing. Like, oh, it's mine. I don't think that's how it works. I'm pretty sure they would just uh, charge you into oblivion for it if you were to do that. But we're going to say that the bank didn't screw up. This is your money to keep. Joe, what are you going to do with it? Okay, the serious side of me, like if I won 30 grand in my hand, I would probably like get together with my wife and we would be able to pay off all of our remaining debt, excluding a, like a home mortgage. Yeah, that's, we, that's we, way more than 30,000 usually. We, we'd pay off all of the student loans and anything like that, personal loans, anything we had, we would be debt free for sure. Oh, that would be amazing. Okay, well, if you're not being responsible, what are you doing? Well, I, I, I think I would want to buy a pontoon boat because I love fishing, but I also was like... <laughs> Like Chris Jansen, buy a boat. I'm going to buy me a boat. Uh, I'd like to buy a pontoon. I I just was actually looking uh, before we started talking, and you can find one. It looks like anywhere from, like, probably used is what I would do. From like seventy five up to like twenty thousand dollars, it's like seventy five hundred to twenty five or twenty thousand. So you could definitely afford any boat. And you then, wanted. and then with the remaining money, have you ever heard of like the people that do those ice baths? Like where they go there, you sit for like three minutes. It's supposed to like shock your system and oh, it feels yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought like a cheap little hundred dollar thing that fell apart online. Don't <laughs> laugh at me. I remember you having that, so it did fall apart. But if you've never <laughs> taken an ice bath, kind of like a polar plunge, it feels amazing. So I'd buy one of those, but those are... Those are like five to ten grand for the professional ones. So you want like a really nice one. Yes. I want like a giant ice cube maker that I can hop in. See, that's fair. What about you? My responsible thing, I would would pay off my car and uh, 
uh, probably the rest of my student loans because I could do both of those with 30 grand very oh, easily. Oh, yeah, get that debt out of here. I, I want that debt gone. I'm hoping to get rid of the car debt either way very soon. But uh, irresponsibly, I, I don't own a home yet. I would first, part of that would be a down payment towards a home. Then the rest of it, I would build a movie theater in the basement of said home. That's what I've always wanted more than anything. I had a friend in high school whose dad did this, and basically they they bought like 10 recliners. They put it in the basement. They got a projector, and it was like genuinely the greatest thing in the world. Because my husband and I love going to the movies, but we don't get to go as much now that we have a newborn. So I just want to bring the movies to me. I don't even care if I have the newest movies. I just want the opportunity to invite my friends over, have a baby there, and if the baby's making noise, no one's kicking me out, and I can just enjoy the movie. And the own luxury of my home. How committed to you are actually making this into a movie theater? Like, are you going like all the way? Oh yeah, there's gonna be like a, a snack counter with free snacks, you know, Ooh, so fully stocked. Okay, okay. We're gonna have the popcorn machine, which we already own, so I would just have that installed there, and that's fine. And then you'd have like the recliners, just like they do at Celebration. So it would be heated, and you could put your little feetsies up. I'd even have like the massaging thing if I could have that. So all the chairs would just like you might take a nap during the movie because it'd be so comfortable at my house, but you'd be safe because you're at my house, so you're not gonna disturb anybody with your snoring. I wonder if you maybe just kind of uh, like went past this on accident, but you would have the popcorn machine. Would you have, this is what, to me what makes it an actual movie theater at home. Sure. Would you have the butter maker? Oh, absolutely. The butter machine? And the little seasonings that they sell, because uh, okay. I do love the little I, seasonings. I support you spending $30,000 on that. That's what I'm saying. You'd be invited over to enjoy it, so of course you support me. But I, we want to know, if you had $30,000 given to you, whether you won thirty grand in your hand, which kicks off again today at 8 a.m., or it just appears either way, what would you do with that $30,000? We would love to hear from you at 616 616- 600-0957. We are the Big Joe and Laura Show here on Mix 95.7 Grand Rapids Best Mix. And speaking of things I don't know what I would do or don't know, uh, I don't know what I'd do if I was handed $30,000 right now. Like, can you imagine you open up your bank account, $30,000 just appears and you can spend it on whatever you want? What would you do, Joe? I would probably, like if I was responsible, I'd spend that 30000 and we'd pay off all of our debt, except for our home. Okay, but irresponsible. Oh God, I'd buy like a pontoon or something. I want to <laughs> I want party this, this summer, baby. Maybe nobody invites me on their boat. I'm going to get my own. See, I'm with you on the debt payoff for the responsible stuff, at least uh, the big debts, uh, the irresponsible. I'm building a movie theater in my basement, but we want to know what you would do if you were to have $30,000 or 30 grand in your hand, if you will. 616-600-0957. Amy and Holland, if you had $30,000, what would you do with it? What I would do is first pay off the debt, um, suffering with long COVID. So it's been, you know, very stressful and bills just keep coming in. I'm getting bills with some of the things that before I even have the services done. Oh, my gosh. And then what I would like to do is I never thought I would be in this situation. And so what I'd like to do with it is also then find someone else that I can also bless them who is going through the struggles that I'm going through. And the last two weeks, the weather has been absolutely awful. And I said I would like a weekend the sun. I don't care where it is. I just like, need some The closest sun. place with sunshine, sign me up. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh, Amy, that's amazing. Well, thank you for sharing with us this morning. We really appreciate it. And I hope either way, those medical bills start to disappear for you because I trust me, as someone who just gave birth, I understand it's stressful trying to get it all under control and try to pay it down. Yes, absolutely. Amy, thank you so much for calling in. We appreciate you. We got a DM from Anna in Rockford. I think this is the correct energy to go into this with. She said if she had $30,000, her hubby has been denying her her birthright of having a Highland cow. And if she had that money, she wouldn't need him anymore. (laughs) That sounds like Lindsay wrote that message. (laughs) It's time for Big Joe and Laura's Need to Know News on Mix 95.7. Have you seen the prices for March Madness tickets? This is insane, especially on the ladies' side. The average price paid for a ticket on the resale market this week was twice as high for the women's final four compared to the men's semifinals. Really? Yeah, the average price of a ticket sold to the women's semifinals was about 2300 bucks. The average price for the guys, only a 1000 Oh, so we doubled it. Ladies, it's our time to shine. Yep, a ticket to the women's championship game, which is happening on Sunday, is selling on average for about 1100 bucks this week. The average for the men's title game, only 650 Oh, it just, does it hurt? Does it hurt to know? that people want to watch our sports more for the first time ever? No, because I love this Caitlin Clark from Iowa. Like, she is amazing. Oh, she's a beast. She's incredible. And she's been smashing all these records left and right for both men and women's basketball, which I think is really cool. I think a lot of people discount women's basketball. And it's just proof the ladies can play too. 
thank you, Caitlin, for making us look good. Obviously, losing a pet is the worst case scenario for anybody. They maybe run out. Maybe they get out of the car. Whatever happens. Thanks to the efforts of some awesome people here in West Michigan. If a missing animal is found, you don't have to wait until the vet opens the next morning to find out who their owner is. There's now a first of its kind pet chip scanner right outside the Kent County Animal Shelter North Campus that's in Cedar Springs. Basically, what you could do is like a little ATM looking machine. and You go up and scan the animal and then it's like, oh, they live at this address if they have a chip. Now, obviously, if your pet is not chipped this isn't going to work for them but i think it's a really cool feature that allows people to kind of do it on their own time because sometimes waiting to go to the vet or all that kind of stuff could really deter people from even returning pets to their owners i love that idea because yeah if you've ever had a dog or a pet run away it's the worst thing ever hopefully if somebody finds it now you could be reunited and your final need to know news story. I don't know if you've seen footage yet, but you should check it out online. It's insane. Of uh, the earthquake that happened in Taiwan yesterday. It was a 7.4. Now, wow. if that happened to us here at the radio station, I assume if the building starts shaking, Laura and I are going to run and scream for our lives. Yeah, sorry. If you're expecting anyone competent to be here, odds are very bad. Well, that was not going to be the case even before an earthquake. <laughs> Uh, But a female TV anchor in Taiwan, live on TV, remained calm while reporting the news. Oh, that's so nerve wracking. And if you haven't seen the video, definitely go check it out because just seeing the cameras and lights and things above her head swinging around, it's a miracle something didn't fall off and crush her to death. She must get paid well. (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. That's your need to know news on Mix 95.7. It's time to play Laura Can't Lose on Mix 95.7. Here's how it happens. Laura leaves the room, and we all enjoy the silence for a little bit, and you'll have one minute to answer five questions. You can pass if you need to, and we'll come back if time allows. A tie goes to Laura because, well, her name's on the show. Here's who's playing Laura Can't Lose today. Representing Allegan this morning, hello, Jessica. Good morning, Jessica. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. You're ready to, to hopefully dethrone me. I've got $50 worth of Michigan lottery tickets up for grabs. If you win, you get to walk away with those. If you lose or tie, we move it up to 55 for tomorrow's game. Are you ready to play? I think I'm ready. You're totally no, ready. Go totally ahead and kick ready. Laura out of the studio. Laura, you got to get out. All right. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Okay. <laughs> Since she closes that door and walks away, we will begin. All right. There we go. Question one. Billie Eilish had a hit song about this type of guy. Oh my gosh. Blue eyed guy? Question two What TV show's theme song began with the line, Whatever happened to predictability? Oh my gosh. Uh, I'm going to guess. The Brady Bunch, maybe? Question number three What fruit is the state of Georgia known for? The peach. Question four Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani met on this singing competition show. The Voice. Question number five. Tom Cruise starred in both of these movies about a Navy pilot. Oh my gosh. Come on, my tongue. Oh gosh. Red Hawk Down, is is that one of them? I am going to bring Laura in. Laura! La 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 la! Laura, you can tie Jessica today if you get two right. Any more than that, you win, and that jackpot goes up to 55 bucks. All right, let's see how I do. Question one. I'm not a hater, so you got this too, Laura. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you, Jessica. <laughs> girls love it, girls. We love to see it. Billie Eilish had a hit song about this type of guy. A bad guy? There you go. Duh. <laughs> do, 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 do. Okay. <laughs> Question two. <laughs> What TV show's theme song begins with the line, whatever happened to predictability? The news band, the paper boy. It's a uh, full house. I couldn't remember the rest of it past that. But <laughs> <laughs> That's correct. I said Brady Bunch, so. Yeah, Brady Bunch is not close, no. No, it's, you know, it's one of those older family, family sitcoms. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving you a crap. All right, Laura, you got a two nothing lead going into question three. What fruit is the state of Georgia known for? Peaches, as Justin Bieber famously told us. Correct. You now lead three to one. Question four. Blake Shelton and Gwen Stefani met on this singing competition show. The Voice. That's correct. Laura has four. Jessica only has two. Going into this final question, Tom Cruise starred in both of these movies about a Navy pilot. Top Gun. Correct, Laura. Five for five today. Jessica, it's hard to beat her when she's that good. I'm so sorry, Jessica. 
It's all right, girl. You got this. You did great. One for the ladies. <laughs> Amen. Uh, hey, if you would be like Jessica, our jackpot's the highest it's ever been now, up to $55 with the Michigan Lottery tickets. Give us a call to play at 616-600-0957. When it comes to getting on the plane, we always try to be comfy and really something easy to get on and off when it comes to your shoes. Hey, we're Big Joe and Laura on Mix 95.7, but what would happen if you got on the plane and they told you, that outfit's not good enough. You got to go. Well, I mean, w- what is not good enough? What, what does that mean? I mean, uh, they say it's, air quotes, inappropriate, at least in their terms. I don't know that I agree with what they're calling inappropriate. We would love to hear from you coming up at 616-600-0957. This woman named Lisa was flying out of Salt Lake City uh, back in January, um, and she was told to get off the plane after everyone was boarded and quiet because her outfit was inappropriate. Now, when you think inappropriate outfit on a plane, what are you thinking, Joe? I just, I feel like if you're just showing off almost like a bikini or something, I'm trying to think of what would be inappropriate. Maybe a shirt that's offensive, which I don't care, but I get that sometimes people wear shirts like, hey, cover that shirt up. I've heard of that before. Like it has bad words on it or something? Yeah, I mean, I I don't care. Like it is what it is. But yeah, I've heard of that before. I guess that's what I would think, right? Yeah, I would think that or like something very skimpy, like a very short skirt, a bikini top, that kind of thing. Well, that's not what she was wearing. She was fully wearing pants and a shirt, but she was wearing a white V-neck shirt with no bra. So they said because she wasn't wearing a bra, people may be able to see things and it was inappropriate. So they just kicked her off the plane and told her to have a nice day and find another way to San Francisco, which is where she was going. Did they, I mean, well, this I feel bad. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate. Did they at least offer her something to cover up with? No. Oh, yes. Yes, they did. They offered her to, uh, to like wear a sweatshirt or something, but on principle, she was like, absolutely not. And I don't blame her because... I don't think there's a law that says you're legally required to have to wear a bra, especially if you're traveling. It's a pain. You want to be comfy. You want to be in whatever element you want. This is a part of a woman's body. She's not like she's topless. I don't I, I, I don't understand where this is offensive to people. If you don't like it, don't look, you know. Yeah, I mean, I would look, but uh, no. No, I mean, yeah, but you're not going to be offended either, Joe. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. And like I said, I would not stand on my principle, I don't think, for that. Like, If Lindsay was that, I'm like, Lindsay, put a blanket on because I want to get to my destination. Yeah, you're like, you I'm could, trying to get to California. Don't screw this up for I us. I can rant and rave about it all day later. But I, I think there is something to be said, though. I like my typical airport or flying thing is like it's sloth mode. I'll put on a pair of uh, gym shorts, like some shoes. Yeah. And like just a t-shirt that's baggy and loose on me absolutely that's exactly what i'm going for or like a sweatshirt something that i don't have to do a lot to get into it's my slob outfit yeah i'm sitting on a plane i'm not trying to be dressed to the nines especially with uncomfortable shoes or something like that my point being maybe should we kind of step up what we wear no because if you're not going to make me dress nice to go to walmart or target or meyer then don't expect me to dress nice on an airplane where literally you can only see the people next to you but that's my point anybody behind you you don't see anybody in front of you who cares what you're wearing but that's my point i think we've kind of gotten lazy in everything we do right like whether it's going to the store whether it's going on a, on a flight does it make me any less efficient getting where i'm going does it affect you if the answer is no why do you care hmm. i feel like it does somehow i just haven't figured it out yet well we want to know should someone be kicked off a flight if they wear something that's deemed inappropriate or should everybody just get over it we want to hear your opinion this morning 616 616- 600 0957. Again, that's 616 600 0957.